Hello, hello. <clears throat> well, thanks for joining me today. Um, we are going to be talking about um, basically the, all the all-inclusive resorts in uh, Mexico and the Caribbean, how they're going to be reopening, what their reopen plans are, and also um, uh, going to talk about um, what kind of safety protocols they're going to implement in order to make sure that uh, we all feel safe um, when we travel again. So, um, I'll just leave this open for comments and give you a few minutes for everybody to get connected. It looks like we've got about five people on so far. I'm just waiting for that to show up in my system. But uh, if you do join in, if you want to make comments on the broadcast, um, all you have to do is log in to your YouTube um, account with either your Gmail account or a Google account. And then you can go ahead and you can type in questions because obviously it's a one-way broadcast. Um, so feel free to jump in that way and do let us know where you're tuning in from. I can't see who has joined for some reason. But uh, if you can hear me okay, let me know. And uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get started pretty quickly here. So I just wanted to say also that... Um, um, I have shared this broadcast information with uh, quite a few people because um, I think there's a lot of people that are really interested in knowing what this is going to look like. Um, if you, um, so I've, I've sent this out to travelers and to travel agents, so it's not just going to be an industry update. Um, hey, Tammy, thanks for tuning in. And um, Tammy says hello. Um, yeah, so basically, you know, all of these resorts I've posted in the um, description down below, you can see uh, the links to the actual resort information. Um, some of them are extremely lengthy and take a lot of time to go through and try to see what they're saying. And a lot of times they're saying the same thing um, multiple times. Um, but uh, as you go, as you all go through, I'll just do a summary of everything so you can see um, what they're planning to do. Now we're going to be covering off today eight resorts. I'm going to talk about what the plans are for Palace resorts and also LeBlanc. So Palace and LeBlanc will be in the same uh, uh, bubble. Uh, Hard Rock resorts, Sandals resorts, uh, Playa resorts, which is Hyatt, uh, Hyatt Zivanzalara, uh, Hilton, uh, all-inclusive resorts, Panama Jack, uh, Jewel resorts, as well as Sanctuary Cap Cana. Um, as well as Palladium. I've got my notes over here as well. Palladium Resorts, Barcelo Resorts, uh, or as uh, well commonly called Barcelo, um, and the Rio Resorts as well. So we're going to cover off all eight of those properties, uh, all eight of those chains, and talk about what their plans are for opening and reopening safely. Um, now, as far as opening goes, I mean... Um, you know, we really don't know um, what is going to happen with opening. Uh, I'm going to take that down for a second. It's cutting off my head. <laughs> um, so we don't really know what's happening with opening dates in terms of what's happening here in Canada, um, what's happening in the U.S., what's happening in Mexico, the Dominican, Jamaica. Um, and just to give you a little bit of background on me, I'm a travel agent and have been for uh, 15 years now, and I'm currently an agent based in Vancouver, Canada, and have had a, a lot of inquiries in the last week for people who are wanting to travel. And not knowing what the status is on everything, um, it's, it's really difficult to say what's going to happen. And well, you know, these days, everything is just day to day, it changes in a heartbeat. So um, Basically, what we wanted to do is just talk about what the plans are looking like. Now, I suspect that these plans will change. I know Hyatt has come out with a very broad level um, overview of what they're planning to do. Uh, Rio wasn't very detailed. Um, Barcelo was not very detailed. And I suspect that as we get closer to the actual opening dates of these resorts, that both that will change and also um, that it will continue to change, of course. We've got a few more people tuning in. There's Freddie. Dean's joining in as well. That's great. Thank you for joining me today. Um, and again, if you're just tuning in now, remember, in order to be able to add comments um, and interact with me, um, you should need to log in to a Gmail account in your YouTube, um, on, on YouTube or either in the YouTube app. 
and then you can type your comments in and I can uh, answer your questions. And if you don't have access to that, feel free to comment below in the video and uh, add your comments and I will be sure to add those uh, later on and, and answer back to you via the comment section. So yeah, um, basically at this point in time, both Canada and the US are on a non-essential travel advisory. And I, if you're watching from another part of the world, thank you for tuning in. Um, but this discussion is predominantly gonna be related to, or this part of the discussion is gonna be predominantly related to Canadians and, US and Americans. Um, but of course, as your country's um, loosens restrictions, um, any of the resort reopening protocols will obviously pertain to you as well. Um, so Mexico, Jamaica, and Dominican are actually currently still on lockdown, um, but they are making plans to reopen their businesses in the near future. I do have some notes here that I'm reading, referencing from. Um, but I mean, let's be honest, the, the situation is being evaluated on a daily basis, and we don't really know what's going to happen. Um, a lot of the resorts, and Cancun in particular, are planning to reopen for business as of June 1st. Um, other resorts are doing a, a static, staggered rollout. Um, for example, Playa, which is Hyatt, um, and Hilton and Panama Jack, and all those ones that I mentioned minutes ago. Um, those are reopening uh, July 1st. That's the schedule. And then there are other resorts um, that are uh, further delaying, and some of them are actually taking advantage of the slow time right now, and they're doing some renovations that were needed. And you know, all those times you see like a cracked tile in the pool. And they don't want to shut down the whole pool for everyone while there's guests that have paid to be there. So now's a perfect time to fix those little things that would otherwise make it uh, less than spectacular um, guest experience. So basically, um, we're going to look at this from two perspectives. One, we are going to look at this from the perspective of what are the resorts doing? And is that enough to make you comfortable to travel, whether you are a traveler or a travel agent? And also, uh, do you think that there's enough in place here for the staff to feel comfortable? Because that's a pretty, <laughs> it's obviously a massive factor. So um, uh, we will continue on to the next stages. So airplanes and airports. Um, now there are protocols in place right now, basically uh, with face masks being required. Um, and that is again, gonna constantly change as things either improve or you know, hopefully not, but possibly get worse. Um, and uh, I just wanted to point out here that there has been some speculation that with the additional protocols that are going to be in place for social distancing and additional temperature checks and stuff like that, uh, that there may be additional delays that will happen um, in terms of uh, getting processed through the airport. So some people are, I've heard recommendations of um, if and when travel does open up, uh, that you should consider being there an hour to two hours ahead of time in order to make sure that you do have the ability to go through and um, and get everything done. And remember, too, that we're everybody's going to be just in a heightened sense of stress these days because um, <laughs> we've just basically lost all control <laughs> of everything. <laughs> and it is what it is, but if it means that we can get to a sunny beach and some fabulous palm trees like the picture I've got behind me, then uh, it's all good, right? Um, hey, virtual dinner party, thanks for joining in. Glad to see you here. So, uh, oops, get rid of that. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, so uh, in-flight service is, is basically not happening right now. So you may want to consider that when you really think if you're gonna be on an eight hour flight, um, and not have any food or beverage service for the whole time. I mean, look, travel is the height of luxury, right? But, um, you know, if you were planning on going away, you might consider uh, a location that's maybe a four hour flight instead of an eight hour flight, uh, just to make the whole experience slightly more enjoyable. I know if and when I go, well, not if, when, uh, when I go, um, I, I probably would choose a location that's a little bit closer, um, but uh, either way, I'm just going to be happy to get on a plane, so it's all good. Um, okay, so moving on, airport transfers. Now, um, what a lot of them, so there's a few resorts uh, that automatically include transfers, and that would be obviously your sandals or your beaches resorts, um, and for those um, suppliers, or for th those resorts, um, basically, 
when you uh, fly into a destination that has a sandals um, resort or a beaches resort, they actually have an in airport lounge. Um, so you can have a great welcoming experience and they are gonna keep those, the plan is to keep them open. As I say, things are constantly gonna be uh, subject to change. Um, and the lounges are gonna be cleaned every 30 minutes. All staff, drivers, porters, basically any staff that you come into contact with, they're gonna be required to wear PPE, so masks and uh, gloves at all times. Guests will be required to use hand sanitizer upon entry, which kind of makes sense. And uh, with the transfers, um, the vehicles will be sanitized after every guest use or after every ride. Um, so that's great. Um, Hard Rock, if you're in one of the premium categories and you have a transfer that's included, uh, guests will be provided with a sanning kit, a sanitation kit, um, which is basically a face mask and gel. Um, now, obviously, you're just going to have come off the plane wearing a mask, but if you choose to remove your mask uh, once you get into the airport or once you've exited the airport, they will have a brand new one for you so that you don't have to re uh Put, put, your, put that same mask on and touch it again, which obviously you want to avoid. And again, um, sanitizing the vehicles after every ride. And for Palace and LeBlanc uh, resorts, um, basically they're talking about um, any transfer rides or if where, you're, where they're doing shuttles in between their properties. Um, they're going to reduce the capacity on those if it's a bulk transfer. Like, um, for example, at the Moon Palace Resort, Massive property. So if you're staying at the Sun Palace and you want to go um, to one of the Nizuk section or to the <laughs> the main section, the name escapes me right now, um, you're basically taking a, a regular bus, like a full-on bus. So they're obviously going to reduce that so that um, if you're a family of four, you can all sit together. If you're a couple, you can sit together. And if you're just going solo, um, then they will space you out accordingly so that everyone has the appropriate amount of social distancing happening. Um, and again, those vehicles will be cleaned regularly. I did try to contact a couple of transfer companies in Mexico, um, and one of them couldn't comment because they haven't had an official uh, statement released yet, and um, the other one didn't answer. So, um, but I'm sure, you know, it's mid May. And even if they are opening at the beginning of June, that's still two weeks, more than two weeks away. So plenty of time for uh, things to get finalized and things to get sorted out. And obviously a lot of it's just gonna come down to common sense with respect to what um, is gonna be happening. Now, as far as um, staff goes, um, all the resorts are very, very conscious of the fact that, well, I mean, the staff have been working for basically the last two months uh, for the most part. Um, so we, they need to get these people back to work. Um, so before the resort opens, they are going to be going through training pro programs with them to make sure that they are a, able to um, uh, recognize signs of, of sickness um, and report them accordingly um, to make sure that, you know, nobody's going flying under the wire. Um, and they're also making sure that the employees are all aware of how they can best interact with the staff um, and do personal hygiene protocols themselves to the standards of which uh, both the government and the resorts have set. Um, now in Cancun, they actually do have a, I don't remember the name of it, but it's basically a resort COVID testing um, standard where they are going to each resort and they are finding out what their plans are and they're going to evaluate them and determine whether or not they are in fact able to, to reopen on June 1st. So um, there's a lot of checks and balances that are going on. Remember too that they are inviting us to their country where they are not at zero count in terms of cases. So if for example we have a lot of cases active here then we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to not infect them and make their situation worse. So it's really, it's a really complicated uh, scenario, but I think the reality is people do want to go on vacation and, and these resorts need to reopen for their economy. So um, what that looks like, you know, we're kind of getting a feel for, um, but again, like I say, it will continue to uh, ebb and flow 
uh, as uh, as they learn more about things and and understand how, if people are comfortable with these changes or with these protocols um, and if they need to step them up or loosen them. Um, so yeah, that's the main thing with staff. Uh, I did also want to say that, uh, where's my notes here? Um, they are also doing some additional things where, oh, here we are. Um, so Hard Rock, for example, is doing daily health checks. Now that was specifically something that they noted. Um, I mean, let's be honest, do, do we not all think that they're all going to be doing that? I think they will to a certain extent. All of those resorts have stated that they will be doing temperature checks on staff daily. So basically upon arrival, before they inter interact with any guests, um, they're going to do a temperature check. And um, a few of them have said that they will be doing this for guests as well. I've got three, four, five resorts have confirmed that this is what they'll be doing. And there are three resorts, which I presume that they'll be doing this and they're not going to be using thermometers. It'll be a thermal check. So a lot of it can be automated and can be done um, non-contact um, and they can just basically monitor. Um, now th this does lead to an interesting question um, and the, the numbers on that are, oh, sorry. And I also wanted to say Palace and uh, LeBlanc resorts are also sanitizing staff uniforms and footwear and they're replacing the masks for staff every four hours. Again, just because they've said that they're doing this and others have not, doesn't mean that the others are not doing it. It just means that they didn't write a book about um, about all the protocols that they're gonna have in place. Um, now the temperature f uh, is gonna be checked for all guests on arrival and it varies slightly, but we're talking within like half a degree, um, give or take, depending if you're metric or not. So for Hard Rock, um, the threshold is 38 degrees Celsius for temperature. Sandals is 37.5. That translates to 100.4 Fahrenheit or 99.5 Fahrenheit. I have not read a lot lately on temperature and how it relates to COVID. And if you can have elevated temperatures normally or through a, if you're going through menopause and you have a, a hot flash or something, I have no idea. Um, if that would elevate your interior body core temperature. I've read a few things that suggest that it doesn't. Um, so that should be fine. But if you do get sick um, and you're sick upon arrival, um, what will be interesting to see is what happens. Uh, the Rio resorts have actually said that if somebody does become sick, um, because they're only going to be opening at a 50 to 60% capacity threshold, uh, in other words, they're only going to fill the resort half full because they want to make sure that people have lots of space. They can open the pool and have the chairs out distanced. Um, and so therefore they will have sections of the rooms that will be closed down and they have a, a plan in, in effect to be able to quarantine people if, should they get sick upon arrival uh, or after they've uh, checked into the resort. So I guess that's, I mean, I think they're all kind of saying the same thing. They know that there's minimum numbers that they need to have in order to ensure a good guest experience. Because, I mean, when I went to the um, the Hyatt Zalara Capcana back in November, like 10 days after it opened, it pretty much was a ghost town. And that's because it had just opened. And there's a couple of bumps. Um, but, I mean, I had a great time. And I quite enjoyed having the resort to myself but it was a much more quiet experience. So they do, the resorts do know that they're, they understand there's a threshold that they have to reach in order for it not to feel like a ghost town, but not to be overcrowded. So I think that's what they're all shooting for. Um, and to, again, ensure that, you know, you're not fighting for a pool lounger um, or basically coming out and deciding there's none to be had because you can't get one in distance or even if they were regular times, they're all taken and be forced to either go to the beach or, just go for a walk. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of thought that's gone into this kind of thing. Uh, so moving on to um, check-ins and arrivals. And, and like I say, if you're just joining in now, um, you can comment on the live chat if you are logged in with Google or Gmail into either the YouTube app or if you're on a desktop into um, the, the YouTube um, program or website um, and you can comment there and if not if you have questions jot them down and um, post them after um, the video ends and I'll be happy to answer back via the uh, via the comments 
Um, and this is open to, I've posted this for both travelers and for travel agents. So it's not specifically an industry um, message. Um, and I am not a spokesperson. I should have cleared that, clarified that at the beginning. I am not a spokesperson for any of these resorts. I do not work for any of them. I'm just a travel agent. Um, but I wanted to know what the plans were for reopening. And there's a lot of information out there and it's really confusing. So I thought I would just do a summary here. So moving on, check-in and arrival. Um, so we talked about the threshold uh, for temperatures and that is something across the board that all eight properties, Palace, Hard Rock, Sand, sorry, all chains, Palace, LeBlanc, Hard Rock, Sandals, Hyatt, and all the Playa resorts, um, Palladium, Barcelo, and Rio, they are all gonna be implementing the temperature checks. Uh, Rio is working on a web check-in, which is pretty cool because you got to think like there's a lot of innovation coming out of um, all these changes and restrictions. So it'd be really cool if they get this to work and um, they get, uh, this is something that becomes just part of their everyday way of doing things. Um, now that they're working on this, it's not going to be operational immediately, um, but at least it's in the work. So that's really cool. Um, they are the Rio resorts chain are also going to be changing their checkout. Um, so checkout is going to be dropped down an hour to 11 and they're going to be bumping up the check-in time to 4 p.m. And what this is going to do is obviously you can imagine and I will get into the detail of this but the, the check the, the cleaning that they're going to do in between um, guests check-in and checkouts and, and new guests coming into the room is going to be pretty extensive. So this by doing this, it gives them two extra hours for the um, the housekeeping staff to get in and really do a proper clean on the rooms. It's not just like 15 minutes, boom, and they're out. Um, so that will definitely help with that. I haven't heard of any of the other properties uh, modifying things, but I could definitely see where that might um, happen. And as long as you can still go to the bars or the restaurants before you hit the airport or before you hit your transfer to the airport, that's not a bad thing. Um, there are also all, all resorts are going to be modifying the common areas uh, for distancing. So, you know, in the lobbies, how they've got the seating arranged, they're going to be moving that and spacing it out so that people are spread out um, naturally. Um, they're also going to be doing increased cleaning of high touch areas. This was a really major point for every single property, uh, every single resort chain where they are looking at um, elevators was basically the number one concern that seems to be coming up as well as check-in. So for example, at, um, the check-in, a lot of them have the, <laughs> I guess they want to call sneeze guards for lack of a, a more sanitary or, uh, um, elevated term. Um, but basically it's just a plexiglass screen. Like we've got in most of our stores here in, in BC now, um, which basically prevents the particles from, getting to um, the staff or vice versa transfer. And remember all the resorts are going to have staff wearing at least masks, if not masks and gloves at all times. That is across the board, a hundred percent going to happen. Um, I feel for those people because if it's going to be 40 degrees outside, that's going to be very hot and uncomfortable. Um, but nonetheless, it's obviously a requirement in order to feel comfortable. Um, so yeah, the high touch areas, elevators, um, uh, lobbies, uh, coffee shop areas, uh, pool chairs, anything like that. Everything is going to be cleaned on a much more, <laughs> a much more consistent and not, maybe not consistent is the right word, but frequent basis. Um, and, uh, they'll have floor markers in the walking areas. So at check-in, um, at the coffee shops where you're lining up to queue for a coffee. Um, and if you're lining up, uh, for enter, enter a, uh, one of the restaurants. Again, they'll have markers on the floor so you can see what appropriate distancing looks like. And it's even to go even more granular, uh, Palace and Sandals have announced restrictions on elevator use um, in terms of uh, how many people will be allowed in at any given time. So Sandals will only be allowing one couple to use the elevator at a time. Uh, now, fortunately, most of their properties are more low rise style. Um, so, um, that shouldn't be too big of a deal. Um, and also, you know, their properties aren't massive, like, um, you know, some of the other properties that are like the moon palace, for example, um, quite a bit larger. So the use of elevators is going to be extreme. And I suspect they might just have a, a cleaner, um, 
staffed at the elevator station, just cleaning everything. Or they might even have a, a staff person who is actually the de designated button pusher. Who knows? Um, and then, of course, anti back gel is going to be, or sent, um, you know what I mean? The, no. The stuff, the Purell is going to be basically throughout the resort everywhere you go. When we were in, um, we were in Cabo at the beginning of March before everything exploded. And um, I have to say it was, it was interesting because it was a, a fairly normal experience. It was before, I mean, at the time that we left, which was mid-March, um, Mexico had 16 um, confirmed cases of COVID. And um, so at the time it was, it was pretty much like, this might not hit us. We might be okay. And despite that, they had, um, antibacterial lotion or gel everywhere. Like every single bar had a jar of it. Um, so I think that will be very consistent, uh, that, that we'll see that type of thing, um, in the resorts everywhere you go, especially at the elevator stations. And again, those high touch areas, even though they're cleaning them, you can be rest assured that you can clean your hands yourself and know that uh, you're not going to have any any risk. Um, okay, so, oh, and check-in. Web check-in is also um, available. I didn't mark this down. Uh, sorry, with, um, with sandals, I believe. No, I put this on my other spreadsheet. Online check-in uh, with Palace. Um, so there, that's another thing that they're doing to um, reduce the, the the checkpoints. And Sandals basically like you'll be able to do the online check in, and when you get to the resort, you can basically just go straight to your room, which is kind of cool. Um, and of course, room keys and stuff like that, or any pens, because you you have to sign the guest registration form. Um, any of those things will be um, uh, sanitized immediately after guest use. And I'm just gonna update my screen, just be right back. There we go. The screen server came on. Um, Cause I didn't print out everything. So floor markers, we talked about um, sneeze guards in place. Declaration of health is going to be at, it looks like probably three of those resort properties, resort chains. And basically what this is gonna be is, this is the same as pretty much you know, if you want to go into a government office these days or a bank um, and they're going to ask you, have you left the country in the last 14 days? Have you been around anybody who's sick? Have you been diagnosed as being sick? And are you feeling unwell? And if you answer yes to any of those questions, um, then you're going to have a problem. Um, but basically, those are the requirements. That is your commitment to them that you're doing everything you can to not bring the virus to them. There are also a few of the resorts are talking about disinfecting luggage upon arrival, which is quite interesting, I guess, because um, between the airport staff and the bellboys or porters, there is going to be contact there. Um, wristbands, if you, well, for resorts that do have them, obviously AMR, or sorry, Dream Secrets, um, Dream Secrets, Breathless, Zoetry, Sunscape, now and reflect resorts. I think I got them all. Um, they basically don't have any wristbands. Uh, Hyatt does not have wristbands. Um, Sandals Palace, Hard Rock do, Palladium, Barcelo, and Rio do. So those all be cleaned prior to being used on guests. Um, room keys disinfected, I said. Occupancy rates low. Um, Oh, the other thing that they're doing is making information sheets uh, digital or digitized. So, for example, in the Rio resorts, they have interactive uh, wall information systems where, and also at the Hyatt, uh, recall, where you can press it, push the, the screen to find out what activities are taking place or what the entertainment is tonight. And what they're going to do with these is basically... Um, freeze the opportunity to make them touch screens and it's just going to be a, a constant scrolling of information so they'll eliminate that touch point um, and um, sandals is going to give you an antibac towel antibacterial towel um, to wear as soon as you arrive so you'll get a cocktail and an antibacterial towel instead of your usual plain wet 
cool towel. So slight modification, but still works. Okay, so let's talk about the pre-room, uh, pre-arrival room clean as well as the daily clean because this is where it gets pretty um, uh, specific. And there's not a whole lot of information on this, but uh, nonetheless, we want to cover this detail because it is key. Um, so basically, all of them are going to do deep cleans in between guests. Um, and all of them are going to be providing uh, more sani gel in the rooms or sani uh, hand sanitizer, I guess, is the best way to call that. So the hand sanitizer will be in the room uh, as well. Obviously, you've got soap. Um, the Rio, it looks to be restricting the amount of um, individual containers and stuff like that that you would be touching. Um, so I suspect it'll still be more like the wall mounted soap containers, uh, that kind of thing. Um, and so, yeah, they're basically reducing, uh, again, reducing the touch points. Um, and the deep cleaning is also going to cover all the high touch areas, but really specifically, like, you know, sometimes you go into a room and you just think, oh, it's just gross. You don't want to touch anything. Um, they are going to be cleaning things like the remote controls, the phone, the light switches, the door handles. Um, they're going to be steam cleaning the curtains, um, cleaning the patio or the balcony door handles. Um, basically all those things that we touch without really thinking about them even you know in the closet the handles for the closet the ironing and the ironing board in the closet that kind of stuff all going to get cleaned um palace is also going to be professionally steaming their mattresses i'm kind of excited about this one because i think these resorts may come may end up being like more sterilized and clean um than when they then as when they first opened which is kind of cool um, they're going to use an uh, electrostatic nebulizer and points to you if you actually know what that is. I've never heard of such a thing. Um, and of course, they're going to have, um, Palace is also going to have hygiene kits in the room for you. So there'll be uh, hand gel, uh, hand wipes, and a mask, which is optional for use. Um, if you are, I shouldn't say optional, because if you're going to the spa, I believe it is a requirement. Um, but for everywhere else, it's purely optional. And then Sandals is going to be doing um, something a little bit different. Well, maybe not. Again, Sandals is really, really detailed um, about what they're doing. And like I say, that doesn't mean to say that the other resort chains aren't doing this, but it does mean that um, it means for sure Sandals is doing it, but others might be doing it as well. So Sandals is basically going to be changing how they clean the in-room glassware. And in, if you've got a, if you make a coffee in the morning, instead of them just rinsing it in the sink, they are actually going to be taking the coffee cups to the main kitchen and properly washing them in the dishwasher so it reaches that, um, uh, not it's sterilizing temperature. So it's purely, so it's, so it's nice and clean. Um, and then they're steam cleaning the soft furnishings in the rooms. They're also going to use a UV LED light, a UV LED light to um, validate cleanliness. And I don't know if this is like, you know, on CSI, New York, Miami, Las Vegas, Chicago, San Francisco, whatever. Um, but on CSI, how they, they use that LED light to measure if there's like body fluids. Um, so I think they might <laughs> they might try that and then decide they don't want to know. Uh, anyways, um, and then rooms are going to be sealed once they're fully cleaned to certify that no one else has entered the room prior to the guest arrival, which is I think kind of cool. Hyatt um, or Playa Resorts are also going to be doing this, um, and basically putting a seal on the room so that you know that uh, once it was cleaned, nobody has gone in and you know been in there to spread germs. Um, Rio are going to be removing some non-essential items from the room to, again, avoid touch points that they would have to clean. So coffee machines are going to be removed, uh, magazines and resort brochures are going to be taken out, as well as laundry bags. So that would suggest to me that no, uh, no laundry services will be available, or if they do do them, they'll probably have some different... Um, maybe you have to order a laundry bag and they deliver it to you and you put your stuff in and then they take it away. Um, oh, and I thought this was a super plus cause I, I know my husband and I both the first thing we do when we get to the room and get to the bed is take this off the bed runners, the things that probably never get washed. I mean, at the 
at good resorts, you know, they do, but is it cleaned every time a guest checks out? I don't know. Um, anyways, Hard Rock is removing them completely, at least for the time being. So I think that's a great thing. Okay, so now we're starting to get into the stuff that's a bit more critical. Dining and buffets. Um, so obviously, and this is, you know, I don't remember the last time I went to a resort restaurant and they didn't require me to use, to take a little dab of um, hand sanitizer. Um, but for sure now it, it won't just be like optional. Hey, I just washed my hands. I'm good to go. It will be mandatory. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, and then most are moving to some sort of uh, digital menu. Um, Sandals is going to simply sanitize the menus after each and every use, which is, I guess that's fine. Um, Hard Rock is moving to an online or a single use disposable menu. Um, and they will also be closing their teppanyaki show cooking. I didn't see any reference to that with any of the other uh, resorts, but I would have to say that from a, a, a seating perspective, unless you're going to have one family or like sitting across from each other, it would be tricky to enable that. Um, I know some of the Hard Rock resorts have massive teppanyaki type tables, so they might still be able to do it in a way where they've got people quite a bit more spread out. Um, buffets will be closed at Palace and Hard Rock. AM Resorts, again, Dreams, Secrets, Breathless, those are the more common brands. Um, they will re remain open, but they're going to modify how that's going to work. Um, and so I suspect that it might be more like a cruise ship where they are serving you. Um, and I will also say Hyatt didn't um, specify their plan right now is really high level. And I know that they are still uh, working on that um, in, into getting into the detail of what their exact plan is, but they're not opening. They've said none of their resorts are going to open until July 1st. So they still have some time. So I don't think that they're delaying or intentionally not sharing that information. I think it's, it's just that they got other priority stuff to work on right now. Um, but I, I think if they do keep their buffets open, I think, again, they'll move to more of a cruise ship model where they have a lot more of the the, the sneeze guards, the plexiglass uh, in front of the cooking stations. And you'll simply go up and you'll ask for your steak or whatever, uh, how you want it cooked um, or a cheeseburger and whatever sides you want. And they'll dish it up and they'll hand you the plate and then you can walk away. Uh, I think that we'll see a lot more introduction of that model. Um, Palladium says they're going to remain open but a high, an emphasis on single use packaging um, or single serving items. So in other words, they're not gonna have big spoons and a big trough or a bowl. Um, and they're gonna promote, they're really gonna promote the a la carte dining um, and personalized show cooking. I'm, I really don't know what they mean by that. Um, and they're also gonna highly encourage room service. Sandals is going to keep the buffets open, um, but it's, again, they're not going to be self-service, like, at all. Um, and they're going to be, have more, the made-to-order cooking stations will have sneeze guards. And um, the Rue, the Rue, you know, kind of one of their cornerstones of, of, or their trademark things that they're known for is their buffets. They're massive. They have tons of stuff. It's, it's great. You can be as indulgent or as guilty and bad as you want to or you can be completely healthy because the the salad bar is like half the room long um so they are adamant that they're going to remain open um but now guests will have to have set seating for buffet buffet service and that's for uh lunch and dinner so you'll you'll have to sign up for a set seating time uh obviously restaurant capacity will be reduced and that look, look that's really going to be across the board at all properties um every restaurant is going to have to modify the how the tables are located so that they have the social distancing and therefore they're going to all be operating at reduced capacity which is okay but because remember we said that they're all going to have reduced capacity in, in the resort so less people at the resort means you can have less people at each restaurant dining each night um the Rio are also saying that guests are going to have to wear masks and gloves in order to go into the buffet. I, I think this likely means that that's while they're traveling around the buffet area and collecting all their food. And if you think about that, if they possibly have, you know, if they're multi, is there multiple touch areas where 
I grab a spoon and dish up some salad. Let's who's who are we kidding? I'm going to dish up some fries, right? And then the next person comes along and they take that same scoop and they dish up some fries. And then we remove our gloves when we sit down at the table and we remove our mask. We can eat, we're distanced and we're not cross contaminating anything. So it, it's not actually a bad concept if I'm interpreting this correctly. And look, I mean, like I said before, I'm not a spokesperson for these resorts. I'm just trying to weed out what the truth is and what they're trying to do. Um, so you're getting my interpretation of it. But um, I have, again, put links down below where you can actually go back and you can read for yourself if you want more clarity. And in the days and weeks to come, we will continue to see even more clarity on what their what their game plan is. Um, they're going to Rio is going to increase the number of live cooking stations. And again, doing more individually portioned items. So you grab it and you take your portion and you walk away with it. So you've got one touch on a bowl uh, as opposed to touching utensils and using those um, multiple times. Overall room service is really going to be encouraged. Um, and uh, Sandals and Hard Rock have specifically outlined their non-contact delivery system. So it's, it's, I mean, I don't know where you are, where you're watching from, but where we are, the, uh, Food delivery is um, all done non-contact. So if you call up and you order a pizza or you order from Skip the Dishes, um, you order your food, they deliver it to your door. You have to prepay. You must prepay. Um, they ring your doorbell and they leave. It's kind of like Amazon. They like drop it and run. <laughs> and uh, so they're leaving it at the door and they might step back and wait to make sure that you open it. Um, you haven't fallen asleep or taken a nap. And, uh, and that's it. Then you grab it and you take it in and uh, enjoy. Um, I've got a question here from Dean. Any word on single visit per meal to the buffet? No, I don't know. And I'm not sure how they would do that. But I suspect if you're in a, if you're in a resort where the buffet service is more like a modified a la carte service where you're kind of just like, hey, I'll have a bit of that, bit of that, bit of that then I think that they will, um, you'll be able to sit there and if you want more cake or you want more salad or something like that, or maybe you want to have a, some, some fruit or something like that. I think you could probably, because you will still have service from a drinks perspective to your table. So there's still going to be waiters and waitresses or servers. Um, so I think from that perspective, you will be able to ask them to go and collect some food for you. Uh, in terms of the Rio experience, I don't know how that would work. Perhaps you would have to go back up to the front entryway, re-sanitize your hands because you've been touching your food and your plate and all that kind of stuff, um, and possibly your face. I mean, you can count the number of times I've touched my face uh, during this session. Um, so you might have to re-sanitize your hands and then put on another mask and gloves, and then you'd probably be able to go through and do the same thing. I don't see any, that would be no different doing it once than it would be to do it twice as long as you are going through um, the same habits um also to clarify all of this is assuming that people are comfortable going all of this is assuming that things r reasonably stay the same i mean if they can come up with a cure or a vaccine um like they did with sars in five months then giddy up and we don't have to worry about any of this stuff. But in the meantime, you know, these countries, they need the tourism factor. And if this is a way to make it work, you know, again, I'm curious what you think if these are, if these policies are enough to make you still want to go, if you feel comfortable, uh, if you just think, I'm just going to go, I don't care, um, and take a chance. Um, you know, there's, a, there's certainly a lot of thoughts around it. And, uh, um, and uh, everyone's everyone's got an opinion, that's for sure, right or wrong. Okay, so pool and beach areas. Um, most are indicating that pool capacity will be monitored. Again, they're limiting the capacity at the resort, so it's easy enough for them to make sure that the pool is not getting too crowded. And as um, the pool fills up, if they have people that are getting too close to one another, Obviously, they'll be breaking that up. Um, but think about it, six feet. I mean, the average person is like five and a half to six feet tall. So you're just standing like one person apart. Um, and you can still have a nice conversation with Joe from Columbia and 
Mary from Washington and meet some new friends and uh, have some fun, um, but still doing the distancing thing. Um, the distancing is going to happen both not only in the pool, but both uh, on the pool deck and in the beach. So again, the pool butler, if you will, is going to be, uh, they're going to be cleaning the chairs every day. Um, they're going to clean the lounge chairs in between use. So if you have done, have had your son for the day, you're going to go back to the room and somebody else needs to use it. They're going to clean it down before they give it to the next person. And they will make sure that they're spaced appropriately apart. Um, uh, lounge chairs completed, yes. So likely they'll have a chair concierge to manage this, sort of like you see at some other resorts where I know at the Hyatt, um, Zalara, Capcana, I saw this a lot, and I think it like LeBlanc and some of those resorts as well, where when you come out to the beach, they have the, the lounge chairs all stacked up and they will bring it out for you and they will put it where you want it. Um, so I think that's one way that they will handle this. Um, Hard Rock has announced that pool activities will be suspended, but I th think to be fair, Hard Rock's a pretty active resort. So while they might be ending or tem temporarily not doing beach volleyball or beach volleyball or pool volleyball, um, where everybody's going to be close and in your face and all that kind of stuff, um, I certainly don't see them stop. Certainly with Hard Rock, don't see them stopping things like music trivia and other challenges like that, bingo and whatnot. So I think there'll still be stuff. They'll just have to be a little bit more creative about it. Um, ping pong tournaments, maybe. I think those would be perfectly fine. Um, maybe, um, you know, there's always bocce and um, horseshoe throwing and all that kind of stuff, the cornhole game. So there's lots of stuff that um, you can do and still be distanced um, and still having fun and, and actually doing a little bit of activity. Um, swim up bars will be closed at Palace and Hard Rock resorts for sure, but that doesn't mean the bar will be closed. So um, they will still be delivering food and drinks right to your lounger. Um, it's just, you're not gonna be sitting at, you're not gonna park at the bar, the swim up bar for an hour and a half and sit there and drink. Um, you're gonna have to either go for a dip in the pool and then go back to your chair and, and drink. Um, the Rio has also announced that they will no longer, at least during this phase, and, oh, this is a good thing. The Rio is not gonna make you use those stupid towel cards. I've always hated that. Um, it just feels so civilized to go to a resort where, you know, if you want two towels because their towels are really short, you can get two towels. So your legs or your head isn't, touching the chair. I mean, not that it's a big deal, but, um, you know, the chairs can get quite hot at times and, um, yeah, it's just kind of a nice indulgence. So giddy up that they're getting rid of the towel cards. Hopefully it remains that way. Um, uh, so that's a good news thing. And there's something else I wanted to say about the, oh, so a lot of the properties are all the bar, um, the, uh, the glassware in the bars, are from what I understand, what I've read, it looks like they're all gonna be using dishwashers now. So no hand washing that we've seen in the past. Um, and possibly might revert back to some single use cups, um, which is, you know, it's unfortunate because we've gotten away from plastic disposable stuff uh, for the most part. Um, so we're, we're taking a little bit of a step back that way, but uh, you know, it's all balance, environment, economy, and uh, we all have thoughts on that, I know. So we don't even need to go there. Um, but this does also beg the question of whether um, travel mugs would be allowed because then everybody's touching everything else. I, I don't know. So it's, it's, it's difficult to say on that one. So we'll await more information on that. And like I say, you know, the, the week that everything opens, this could change 90 degrees, like easily go um, change completely. Now, as far as, uh, Oh, we just, yeah, okay. Um, as far as activities go, uh, including the spa, the gym, evening entertainment, um, the basically all of them are gonna put occupancy restrictions on anything that is indoors because they just need to manage how many people are in the room at one time in terms of um, transmission. 
So we're going to see uh, occupancy restrictions on all those activities uh, for the spa. Obviously, you're going to have to make appointments, which you've always had to make, but they'll be scheduling a little bit further apart. So they have time to go through and do a proper clean. So if you go in for a massage, um, what's going to happen is you'll go in and, and depending on the resort chain, you might have a, a bag that's got a sanitized uh, and sealed um, robe to put on and um, not flip flops, uh, slippers. And, uh, or, or you might just have, you know, it might be in the, on the, on a counter or something and it's cleaned. Um, but once you've had your massage and everything, then they have to go through and they have to clean everything. So all the surfaces and everything um, to make sure that that's ready for the next guest. So they're going to be spacing those a little bit further apart. Gym, the gym will also be uh, open to everybody. Uh, can, obviously you're going to have to use hand sanitizer before you enter any of these places. And with the gym, um, there's talk up from different resorts that they will actually modify the layout of the gym so that the, for example, the cardio equipment, they always put the treadmills side by side by side. And that's just logical because it takes up the least amount of space. But they'll either unplug the one in between or um, they'll remove it physically so that it's people are properly properly spaced in between to use the, the equipment. And as well, you know, if you're at a resort like a... Um, you know, Zoetry or Sandals or Hyatt, well, basically everyone that I've listed here today, um, they all have a really good uh, fitness programs and yoga and stuff like that. So again, those there's no reason why those can't continue. They'll just need to make sure everybody's spaced out. And honestly, you get hot and sweaty, you want to be spaced out anyways. <laughs> so it's not a bad thing. Um, for the an evening entertainment, um, Hard, Rock, Hard Rock has specified that they're going to go one step further in terms of um, everything where they're going to make sure families are able to be seated together and couples and individuals, all that, have the proper distancing. But they're also going to have staff that are going to manage the entry and the exit from the venue. So in other words, you might come in on this door and walk across the room and then you'll exit out of this door so that you have a constant traffic flow so that you don't have people going past each other and, and getting too close. And again, some people are throwing caution to the wind. They're okay with it. Um, and other people are not comfortable. So they're just trying to find a happy medium on that one. Um, but there is basically they're saying, you know, entertainment, evening entertainment is going to continue. Some of them are talking about doing a, a massive deep clean of the the theater area. Um, so for example, if you've got a dance show that goes on in the in the evening, there, people are gonna be sweating and stuff like that, or if they're singing, that kind of thing. Um, so they're gonna do deep clean of the stage and, and all that kind of stuff to make sure that the entertainers aren't getting sick either. And next we have, so we're almost at the end. So um, also there's some general stuff about PPE for guests. Um, resorts are kind of, basically be more creative to come up with activities for the guests so that they, so they feel happy. Um, they don't, they, the resorts recognize that they don't, you don't want to go on a resort and feel like you're in a hospitalized sterile environment where you're not going to have any fun. They, they know you want to have fun. You want to make those connections. You want to relax. Um, so they're going to do everything that they can to um, facilitate that and to make sure that they're giving you a great uh, guest experience. So we think we're going to see some some interesting ideas come out of this and uh, they'll be doing things in a, in a much different way. So I have some questions I want to leave you with and I'd love to hear your thoughts below. Um, you know, either that or, or um, just comment through, through this. Um, so basically, um, we talked about this. So if you arrive and you do the temperature check and for some reason between the point that you woke up that morning got to your airport, got on the plane, got to the next airport, arrival airport, went on the shuttle and then got to the resort. Somewhere in between that you got sick um, and you do find that you're sick upon arrival or during your stay, what happens? I think, think those are questions that people want to know and want to be addressed just so they kind of have like, am I going to get quarantined? Am I going to be sent to the hospital? Am I just going to be sent home on the next plane? What's the deal with that? Uh, will travel mugs be allowed? We talked about that one. Um, what activities will you be comfortable doing? This is something that I'm really curious about. Like, I mean, there are so many different things that we can still do. Um, 
and then there's active activities, and then there's just cerebral activities, um, and then there's just fun activities like, um, you know, bingo and and music trivia and stuff like that. Um, so what kind of activities are you interested in and what would you be comfortable doing is, is the second part of that question. Um, tipping. So basically these people have been out of work for two months and if we're going to go, are you going to modify how you tip at the resorts? Are you going to tip more or are you going to tip less? And this isn't necessarily something that you need to answer to me because uh, it's none of my business, none of my business. But it's just something to think about um, just to kind of show your appreciation for them reopening and giving you a, a nice, sunny, relaxing place to go. Um, I don't know, something to think about. And the last question is, uh, as far as tours and excursions go, I, you know, I'm a, a, a kind of a bit of a mix. I do enjoy just going to a resort, but I get pretty antsy if I had to stay on the resort for the whole time. Now, if I had to, and that was the only way I could go, I could deal, no problem. Um, I mean, by November, hello, get me out of the rain and the cold, and I will be happy to do whatever you say I need to do to get down to the resort and to get on a beach. But um, if you are allowed to go on tours and excursions, I know that the resorts are not even going to let these guys come on property to take you away for your um, for your excursion unless they know for sure that um, that it's going to be safe and that they're doing a lot of safety protocols and stuff for you. Um, so on that part, I think we can trust the tour operators and what they're going to do. But what about going into town? Um, you know, will we be allowed to go into town? Would you go into town? Should you go into town? Um, I mean, I think if we all are, op we're all going to do that dual thinking thing where you have to assume that you've got it and that you could be spreading it. But at the same time, we wouldn't even be traveling if we didn't think that we were healthy enough to do so. So, you know, again, you know, what do you think? Um, if you, if you can't get out and enjoy the, the local area, will you still go? I think at this point I would still go hands down. No, I know I would still go. I mean, for a, a jump of like 30 degrees of temperature and I'm talking Celsius, um, maybe 20 degrees. Um, I think I would definitely still go. That's a nice comment here. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, that, you know, it's, it's payback time. If they're gonna, if they're gonna do this to open up, they don't need to. And travel is a luxury. We don't need to do it. Um, many of us can't afford to do it. Um, but the, this is how, this is the whole livelihood for some of these people. Um, so yeah, I, I, well, you, obviously you can tell my thought, my thoughts on that are tip and tip well, but that's just my thoughts. So I think that's, um, oh yeah. Yeah, I agree. Especially like. I mean, it's sunny out today. I'm here in Vancouver, Canada. Um, we're getting pretty close to opening up things again. And we're, I don't know what our numbers are today, but we're down to like, on average between eight and 15 new cases a day. So we're doing really well. We're flattening the curve, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it's really nice out. Like it was almost 30 degrees on the weekend. I don't even know what that is in Fahrenheit, maybe 80, 85 maybe not higher than that. I don't know, but it was lovely. But my point is in six months time, it will not be lovely. We'll be on that low part of the year where it's daylight for like seven and a half hours. It's miserable out. It's rainy. It's cold. We will have lost all of our tans. <laughs> and uh, for that, if you had the opportunity to travel, would you? Um, I think I would for sure. So anyways, these are basically the plans that all the resorts have made for reopening. Um, I hope this, you hope you found this helpful. Um, as I get more information, I will definitely share it. Um, and oh, 30 Celsius is apparently 90 Fahrenheit. There you go. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you do, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. 
Uh, I am going to try to do more uh, videos on this um, travel related stuff, which is what my channel is all about. Um, so trying to go back to that um, as things are communicated and as we know more, like I say, oh, thanks, Freddie. Glad you enjoyed it. Um, so as we know more about the different resorts and what their game plans are, you know, I'll definitely share that. Like I said, I know the, the Rio information and the Barcelo and the Palladium was a bit skinny um, in terms of details. Um, and I know for a fact that Hyatt um, has got much more detail, detailed plans coming. They just haven't announced it yet. Um, and I know that they are very being very thoughtful about how they um, are going to do their approach to reopening. I really, I'm sounding like our health minister. Be very, be very kind, be very thoughtful. <laughs> I was listening to her too much on her daily updates. Um, so anyways, yeah, they've got a plan. Um, they're going to make it work, I hope. Uh, hopefully uh, our borders open when it is safe to do so. And hopefully that is, uh, I'm hoping that sometime this year. Maybe sooner is not better. But uh, whenever it's good to go, then uh, I hope it works. I hope everyone stays safe. And uh, thanks for tuning in. If you have any comments or questions, post them below and I'll be happy to answer. And uh, if you're not doing anything on Saturday, I know it's a long weekend for most of us. And uh, at 11 on Saturday, I'm going to be doing some travel and food trivia, which has been a lot of fun. So if you want, join me there. And uh, if not, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.